The Twelve Apostles of Jesus Who were the Twelve Disciples? The Disciples, or Apostles of Christ, were the cornerstones of His Church. In the book of Revelation chapter 21, verse 14, we are told that the twelve foundations of the wall of the New Jerusalem will have the names of the twelve disciples inscribed on them. It is evident, in this way, that our Lord attributes great importance to these men. Apostle 12. Thomas. Thomas de Demos lived in Galilee. Tradition says that he worked in Parthia, Persia, and India, suffering martyrdom near Madras, on Mount St. Thomas, India. Thomas was his Hebrew name, and Didymos, his Greek name. He was sometimes called Judas. Matteo, Marco, and Lucas don't tell us anything about Thomas, except his name. However, John defines it more clearly in his Gospel. Thomas appeared at the raising of Lazarus. Book of John chapter 11, verses from 2 to 16. In the upper room. Book of John, chapter 14, verses 1 to 6. Where he wanted to know how to know the way to where Jesus was going. In the book of John, chapter 20, verse 25, we see him saying that unless he saw the marks on Jesus' hands and on his side, he was not going to believe. Because of this, Thomas became known as Thomas the Unbeliever. Thomas came to believe through doubt. By nature, he was a pessimist. He was a puzzled man. Still, he was a man of courage. He was a man who could not believe until he had seen. He was a man of devotion and faith. When Jesus rose, he returned and invited Thomas to put his finger in the nail marks in his hands and his side. And it is here where we see Thomas making the greatest confession of faith, my Lord and my God. Thomas's doubts were transformed into faith. Thomas was always like a small child. His first reaction was not to do what he was told to do, and not to believe what he was told to believe. The good news to him was always too good to be true. Through this fact, Thomas's faith became bigger, more intense, and more convincing. It is said that he was commissioned to build a palace for the king of India, and was killed with a spear as a martyr for his lord. His symbol is a group of spears, stones, and arrows. Apostle 11. Simon. Simon the Zealot one of the little-known followers called the Canonist, or Zealot, lived in Galilee. Tradition says that he was crucified. In two places in the 1960 Reign of Valera version, he is called a Canonist, Book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 4, Book of Mark, chapter 3, verse 18. However, in two other places he is called Simon Zealot. Book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 15, Book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 13. The New Testament tells us practically nothing about him personally, except that it says that he was a zealot. The zealots were fanatical Jewish nationalists who heroically disregarded the suffering involved and fought for what they considered the purity of their faith. The zealots were maddened with hatred for the Romans. It was this hatred for Rome that destroyed the city of Jerusalem. Josephus says that the zealots were imprudent people, zealous in good practices, and extravagant and imprudent in the worst kinds of actions. From around him, we see that Simon was a fanatical nationalist, a man devoted to the law, a man with a bitter hatred for anyone who dared compromise with Rome. Still, Simon clearly stood out as a man of faith. He abandoned all his hatred for the faith he showed towards his teacher, and the love he was willing to share with the rest of the disciples, and especially with Matthew, the Roman tax collector. Simon the Zealot, the man who might once have killed Israel out of loyalty, became the man who saw that God's will has no forced service. Tradition says that he died as a martyr. 
His apostolic symbol is a fish on a Bible, indicating that he was a fisherman who became a fisher of men through preaching. Apostle 10. Philip. Tradition says that Philip preached in Phrygia and died a martyr at Herapolis. Philip came from Bethsaida, the town from which Peter and Andrew came. Book of John, chapter 1, verse 44. The resemblance is that he, too, was a fisherman. Although the first three Gospels record his name. Book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 3. Book of Mark, chapter 3, verse 18. Book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 14. Book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 13. It is in the Gospel of John that Philip becomes a living personality. Scholars disagree about Philip. In the book of Acts, chapter 6, verse 5, we have Philip as one of the seven ordained deacons. Some say that this is another Philippe. Some believe that this is really the Apostle. If he is the same Philip, then his personality took on more life because he had a successful campaign in Samaria. He directed the Ethiopian eunuch to Christ. Book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 26. He also stayed with Paul in Caesarea. Book of Acts, chapter 21, verse 8. And he was one of the important figures in the missionary endeavors of the early church. The Gospel of John shows Philip as one of the first among many to whom Jesus addressed the word, follow me. When Philip met Christ, he immediately found Bartholomew and told him, we have found him, of whom Moses, Deet and the prophets wrote. Bartholome was distrustful. But Felipe did not argue with him. He simply replied, come and see. This story tells us two important things about Philip. First, it shows his correct approach to the one he distrusts and his simple faith in Christ. Second, it shows that he had a missionary instinct. Felipe was a man with a warm heart and a pessimistic head. He was one who would have liked very much to do something for others, but he did not see how it could be done. Still, this simple Galilean gave everything he had. That's why God used him. It is said that he died by hanging. While he was dying, he asked that his body be wrapped, not in linen, but in papyrus, because he was not worthy of even his body being treated as the body of Jesus. The symbol of Philip is a basket for his participation in feeding the 5,000. It is he who marked the cross as a sign of Christianity and victory. Apostle 9. Matthew. Matthew, or Levi, son of Alphaeus, lived in Capernaum. He was a publican, or tax collector. He wrote the gospel that bears his name. He died as a martyr in Ethiopia. Matthew's call to the apostolic group is mentioned in the book of Mark, chapter 2, verse 14, book of Matthew, chapter 9, verse 9, and book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 27 to 28. From these passages we learn that Matthew was also called Levi. It was a common custom in the Middle East at the time of Christ for men to have two names. Matteo's name means a gift from God. The name Levi could have been given to him by Jesus. It is interesting that James the Less, who was one of the twelve apostles, was the brother of Matthew, also the son of Alphaeus. Although we know little about Matthew personally, the outstanding fact about him is that he was a tax collector. 
The Reina Valera version calls him a publican, which in Latin is publicanus, emphasizing commitment to public service, a man who handled public money, or a tax collector. Of all the nations in the world, the Jews hated tax collectors the most. To the devout Jew, God was the only one to whom it was right to pay tributes and taxes. Paying it to anyone else was infringing on God's rights. The tax collector was hated, not only on religious grounds but also because most were notoriously unfair. In the minds of many honest Jewish men, these tax collectors were considered criminals. In New Testament times, they were classified along with prostitutes, Gentiles, and sinners. Tax collectors have been known to determine the amount due in impossible sums, often offering travelers to borrow money at very high interest rates. So was Matthew. Still, Jesus chose a man whom all men hated and made him one of his own. Jesus Christ, he could see the potential in the Capernaum tax collector. Matthew was different from the other apostles, who were all fishermen. He was able to use a writing pen, and by his pen he became the first man to present to the world, in the Hebrew language, an account of the teachings of Jesus. It is clearly impossible to estimate the debt Christendom owes to this despised tax collector. The average man would have thought it impossible to reform Matthew, but with God, all things are possible. Matthew became the first man to write down the teachings of Jesus. He was a missionary of the gospel, who exchanged his life for the faith of his master. Matthew's apostolic symbol is three bags of money, which remind us that he was a tax collector before Jesus called him. Apostle 8. Judas Thaddeus. Judas Thaddeus, or Labio, son of Alphaeus, or Cleophas, and Maria. He was the brother of Santiago, the youngest. He was one of the apostles about whom little is known and lived in Galilee. Tradition says that he preached in Assyria and Persia, and died as a martyr in Persia. Jerome called him, Trinomios which means, a man with three names. In the book of Mark, chapter 3, verse 18, he is called Thaddeus. In the book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 3, he is called Labio. His last name was Tadeo. In the book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 16, and in the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 13, he is called Judas, the brother of James. Judas Tadeo was also called Judas the Zealot. By character, he was an intense and violent nationalist with the dream of world power and domination of the chosen people. According to the New Testament records, Book of John, chapter 14, verse 22, he asked Jesus at the Last Supper, How is it that you will manifest yourself to us and not to the world? Judas Tadeo was interested in making Christ known to the world. Not as a suffering savior, but rather, as a ruling king. We can clearly see from the answer Jesus gave him that the way of power can never be replaced by the way of love. It has been said that Judas went to preach the gospel in Edessa, near the Euphrates River. There he healed several, and many believed in the name of the Master. Judas, went from there to preach the gospel in other places. He was killed with arrows on Ararat. The symbol chosen for him is the boat because he was a missionary taught to be a fisher of men. Apostle 7. Judas Iscariot. Judas Iscariot, the traitor, was the son of Simon, who lived in Kerioth, of Judah. He betrayed Jesus for thirty pieces of silver, and then hanged himself. Book of Matthew, chapter 26, verses 14 to 16. 
Judas, the man who became the traitor, is the supreme enigma of the New Testament, because it is very hard to see how someone who was so close to Jesus, who saw so many miracles, and heard many of the Master's teachings, could betray him in hand of his enemies. Judas is said to have come from Judah, near Jericho. He was a Jew, and the rest of his disciples were Galileans. He was the group's treasurer, and was among those leading conversations. It is said that Judas, was a violent nationalistic Jew, who followed Jesus in the hope that through him, his dreams, and his nationalist flame, could be realized. No one can deny that Judas was a greedy man, and at times he used his position as group treasurer to take money from the common purse. There is no certain reason why Judas betrayed his teacher, but it was not his betrayal that put Jesus on the cross, but our sins. The apostolic symbol of it, is a noose of a gallows, or a little bag of money, with pieces of silver falling out of it. Apostle 6. Santiago, the Minor. Santiago, the Minor, or youngest, son of Alpheus, or Cleophas, and Maria, lived in Galilee. He was the brother of the Apostle Judas. According to tradition, he wrote the Epistle of James, preached in Palestine and Egypt, and was crucified in Egypt. Santiago was one of the lesser-known disciples. Some scholars believe that he was the brother of Matteo, the tax collector. Santiago was a man of strong character and one of the most ardent types. Tradition tells us that he, too, died as a martyr, and his body was cut into pieces. The saw became his apostolic symbol. Apostle 5. Bartholomew. Bartholomew Nathaniel, son of Talmai, lived in Cana, in Galilee. Tradition says that he was a missionary in Armenia. A number of scholars believe that he was the only disciple to come from royal blood, or from a noble family. His name means son of Tolmai, or Talmai. Book of 2 Samuel, chapter 3, verse 3. Talmai, was king of Geshur, whose daughter, Maka, was the wife of David, mother of Absalom. The name of Bartholomew appears in each list of the disciples. Book of Matthew, chapter 10, verse 3. Book of Mark, chapter 3, verse 18. Book of Luke, chapter 6, verse 14. Book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 13. This was not the first name, however, it was his middle name. His first name was probably Nathaniel whom Jesus called, a true Israelite, in whom is no guile. Book of John, chapter 1, verse 47. The New Testament gives us very little information about him. Tradition indicates that he was a great investigator of scripture, and a student of the law, and the prophets. He became a man of complete surrender, the carpenter of Nazareth, and one of the church's most adventurous missionaries. It is said of him, that he preached with Philip in Phrygia and Herapolis, also in Armenia. The Church of Armenia claims him as its founder and martyr. However, tradition says that he preached in India and his death seems to have taken place there. He died as a martyr for his Lord. He was skinned alive with knives. The apostolic symbol of him is three parallel knives. Apostle 4. Andrew. Andres was the brother of Pedro and son of Jonas. He lived in Bethsaida and Capernaum and was a fisherman before Jesus called him. Originally, he was a disciple of John the Baptist. Book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 16 to 18. Andrew brought his brother Peter to Jesus. Book of John, 
Chapter 1, verse 40. He is the first to have the title of missionary at home and abroad. He is claimed by three countries as their patron saint, Russia, Scotland, and Greece. Various scholars say that he preached in Syria, Greece, and Asia Minor. Andrew brought others to Jesus as well. Although circumstances placed him in a position where it might have been easy for him to become jealous and resentful, he was optimistic and content in the background. His main purpose in life was to bring others to the Master. According to tradition, Andrew died as a martyr in Achaia, Greece, in the town of Patra. When Governor Aepes's wife was healed and converted to the Christian faith, and shortly after the governor's brother became a Christian, Aepes, she became very angry. He arrested Andrew and sentenced him to die on the cross. Andres, feeling unworthy of being crucified on a cross, in the same way as his master, begged that his be different. So he was crucified on an X-shaped cross, which to this day is called the St. Andrew's Cross, and is one of the apostolic symbols of him. A symbol of two crossed fish is also used to refer to Andrew, since he was originally a fisherman. Apostle 3. John. John Bonerges, son of Zebedee, and Salome, brother of James, the Apostle. He was known as the Beloved Disciple, a fisherman who lived in Bethsaida, Capernaum, and Jerusalem, and was a member of the Inner Circle. He wrote the Gospel according to St. John, 1 John, 2 John, 3 John, and Revelation. He preached among the churches of Asia Minor. Banished to the Isle of Patmos, he was later released and died a natural death. John was one of the prominent apostles. He is mentioned in several places in the New Testament. He was a man of action. He was very ambitious, and a man with an explosive temper and a bigoted heart. His middle name was Bonerges, which means son of thunder. He and his brother James came from a family of better standing than the rest of the apostles. Being that his father hired servants in his fishing business. Book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 20, he may have felt above the rest. He was very close to Pedro. They acted together in the ministry. Pedro, however, was always the group's spokesman. Juan matured over time. In the later stage of his life, he had forgotten everything, including his ambition and his explosive temper, except his commitment of love to the Lord. It is said that an attempt was made against his life by means of a chalice of poison, from which God saved him. He died of natural causes. A chalice with a serpent is his symbol. Apostle 2. James, the Ancient. James the Ancient, Bonerges, son of Zebedee, and Salome, brother of John the Apostle, a fisherman who lived in Bethsaida, Capernaum, and Jerusalem. He preached in Jerusalem and Judea and was beheaded by Herod in the year 44 after Christ. Book of Acts, chapter 12, verses 1 to 2. He was a member of the inner circle, so-called because it was made up of those who received special privileges. The New Testament tells us very little about James. His name never appears separately from his brother Juan's. They were an inseparable duo. Book of Mark, chapter 1, verses 19 to 20. Book of Matthew, chapter 4, verse 21. Book of Luke, chapter 5, verses 1 to 11. He was a man of courage and a spirit of forgiveness, a man without envy, living in the shadow of John, a man of extraordinary faith. He was the first of the twelve to become a martyr.
His symbol is three crustacean shells, a sign of his pilgrimage through the sea. Apostle 1. Peter. Simon Peter, son of Jonah, was a fisherman who lived in Bethsaida and Capernaum. He did evangelistic and missionary work among the Jews, going as far as Babylon. He was a member of the inner circle and wrote the two New Testament epistles that bear his name. Tradition says that he was crucified in Rome with his head down. In each apostolic list, the name Peter is mentioned first. However, Pedro had other names. At the time of Christ, the common language was Greek, and the family language was Hebrew. Thus, his Greek name was Simon, Book of Mark, chapter 1, verse 16, and Book of John, chapter 1, verses 40 to 41. His Hebrew name was Cephas, Book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 1, verse 12, chapter 3, verse 22, chapter 9, verse 5, and book of Galatians, chapter 2, verse 9. The Greek meaning of Simon is rock. The Arabic meaning of Cephas is also rock. Due to his commercial activity, Pedro was a fisherman. He was a married man, book of 1 Corinthians, chapter 9, verse 5. Jesus probably established his center of direction there when he visited Capernaum. Peter was a Galilean, as were several of his other disciples. Josephus described the Galileans this way, they were always fond of innovation and by nature ready for change and delighted in sedition. They were always ready to follow the leader and to start an insurrection. They were quick to temper, given to fighting, and were very gentlemen. The Talmud says this of the Galileans, they were more eager for honor than for gain, hot-tempered, impulsive, emotional, easily aroused by the idea of adventure, loyal to the end. Pedro was a typical Galilean. Among the twelve, Peter was the leader. He stands out as the spokesman for the apostles. It is he who asked the meaning of the parable in the book of Matthew, chapter 15, verse 15. It is he who asked how often we should forgive. It is he who inquired about the reward for all those who follow Jesus. It is he who first confessed Jesus and declared him as the Son of the living God. It is he who was on the Mount of Transfiguration. It is he who saw the daughter of Jairus rise from the dead. And still, it is he who denied Christ before a servant. He was an apostle and a missionary who gave his life for his Lord. It is true, Pedro made many mistakes, but he always had the saving grace of his loving heart. No matter how many times he fell and failed, he always got his courage and integrity back. Pedro was martyred on a cross. Peter requested that they crucify him upside down because he was not worthy to die as his Lord had died. His apostolic symbol is an inverted cross with crossed keys.